back to JS Urban Adventures. Today I'm going to be talking about why I love my Chinook Summit bivy sack. Roll that intro. pieces of gear that I own, an awesome piece of equipment, the Chinook Summit Bivy Bag. This guy here comes in at $90 to $110. When I got it on Amazon it was uh, $100. Right now it's down to $90 so that's pretty good. It weighs in at only two pounds and if you don't know what a bivy sack is, it's that thing that I was inside of at the beginning of the video. Basically what was keeping me from freezing to death in all that snow, <laughs> right? I'm sticking with the whole Nalgene bottle for size comparisons. Like I said, it's only two pounds. It's barely bigger than the Nalgene bottle. I ordered this thing in blue. Thank God it came in green because as a homeless person camping, this green is a lifesaver. If I put this thing, set it up in the grass with some bushes behind me, nobody can even tell I'm there when I'm in this thing. It's awesome. Here it is, olive green. All right, now I'm gonna set it up for you guys. So, you can see how it's done, how quick it is, how easy it is. This bivy sack uses two DAC feather light poles, tent poles that break down. There's two slots here. Just slide them in like so. Find the one slot on in there, slide it down, which will bring me to this. This is my first complaint about this bivy sack. So this stitch broke. I'll show you a couple other stitches that broke. Um, basically, it's my only complaint about this. I like to get my complaints out early in the video. Um, there are some durability issues with this. I found this sleep sack, or I found this bivy sack on Wikivids, top 10 um, best uh, bivy sacks, and this was ranked number three, um, but it was like $200 less than the number two one. The top three had had uh, poles and looked like this, but the other ones that were like this were like $300. Um, this was in my price range. I wanted to spend less than $150 on a bivy sack. Uh, I thought I was going to end up having to get the military version, which is just a bag um, it's very durable but it doesn't stay up off your face at all um, luckily I found this guy that was only a hundred dollars but that price difference I think is why we have some durability issues now what you got to do is make sure you got two two things here for your poles and then you got on each side two things where it can go down into. So you want to make sure the pole that's coming from this one goes to the opposite uh, hole. So right, right now I'm trying to put it in the wrong hole, that's why it's not working. Make sure it goes to the opposite hole, which is this one. So the same side, same thing on this side. Oh, and I'm also gonna sew this up with my sewing kit a little later. And also, dealing with the durability thing. See these grommets? Well, two of them had this happen. This one, first time I ever set this thing up. First time I put the pole in, this half of the other side of the grommet popped off. Over on this side, I got one that popped off this morning. I've had this thing since December 21st. It is now February something, February 5th, the beginning of February. So about a month and a half I've had it probably. Uh, that one popped off first time, other one popped off this morning, so now two out of four of those um, little washer things have popped off. I got this tear here. Now this is a high pressure point where this pole is bending, 
So I, you know, kind of expect that. It's it's thin nylon, it tore, you know, not a big deal. I can sew that up. Not a huge complaint. So the pole in. Sorry guys, my hands are freezing right now. And that's why I'm having difficulty putting this together. So this front baffle, um, or I just call it a baffle, where you put the pole has no rips. So that's good. You get your pole in, pop it down into there. Get over here on the other side. Sometimes I kind of push down on the other side. Just make the pole flex, and boom, it's in. Now what these poles do, they create a canopy around your face so the fabric doesn't fall into your face. If you're looking for cheap bivy sacks, you can find them for $30, $50 um, where there's no poles and the sack just rests on your face. A lot of people can't deal with that. I don't think I would like it because A, you got fabric on your face all night. B, um, condensation builds up in these things, which is something we're gonna talk about in a second that's special about this bivy sack. But con condensation will build up in these even if it has a vent like mine, like I'm about to show you, um, condensation will build up if you don't have the poles or you don't have something, you know, if you have the kind without the poles, you can put things inside of there to hold the fabric up off your face. I recommend you do so because if you don't, you're gonna have water on your face all night from the condensation. This brings me to my next point about this is the fabrics that it's made of. So mostly it's um, a, what they call waterproof breathable nylon on on the bottom area this darker green on the inside you can see the bottom is a white waterproof material no water gets through there um, from the ground and uh, then on the top here we have ripstop nylon I believe it's 5,000 millimeter uh, ripstop nylon see how it has the uh, the squares sewn into it so if you start to get a tear those, those little checker patterns, that stops it. That's um, seams going all through it that stop the rip. That's why it's called rip stop. <laughs> but another fabric that makes up this thing is the ventilation system that they've put into it. So on the back here, which is the only one that I've seen with this, this is a really cool feature, I like it a lot. On the back here is this flap, which has a, a loop. Uh, where you can put a stake. So basically, when it's on the ground, well, I'll show you that in a second. But so there's this flat, a waterproof flat, and if you lift it up, you can uh, you can roll it up if you'd like. And under here, there's one of these guys um, that you can take and put into this loop. There's a loop here too. There's another one over here. Basically, you can put these guys up into those loops and it holds a little window open for you. And this is a mesh screen, so bugs won't get in, but you can see out through it. It's like a window, it's pretty cool. I usually leave it down though for my privacy and for in case it rains, uh, water could get through there. But, um, but at least it's there, so you have it. Another cool aspect is on this side. So when you're inside of this thing, I have them uh, looped up right now into there. Let's see if I can show this to you. So then you can undo those loops, zip this closed. And now you got a window in the front too. This is pretty cool. So you don't have to have the fabric on your uh, right above your face. You can have a window and be looking at the stars. That's really awesome. I haven't used that yet because again, with the weather, the cold, with the cold or rain, you want these two both closed because um, that mesh is not waterproof. Water will get through there if you have it open. And when it's cold, when it's cold, you want this thing as sealed up as you can get it because you'll be breathing inside of it, your body warmth inside of it. You don't want any of that getting out. You want to be warm, right? We got a puppy watching our video. All right. So here it is on the ground for you guys, all set up in all its majesty. Now it does not come with stakes when you buy it, but it does have loops. One at the bottom here, you can put a stake there. 
and then there's two up here at the top where you could put another stick. Woo! I'm like on the side of a mountain right now. Here, let me show you guys where I'm standing and where I almost fell. Yeah, I love this place. But anyway, back to the review. Uh, so here it is, olive green, blends in great when it's not snowing. Where the poles go, you can put stakes in here. There's extra loop. And then there's a loop here on the rain, on the rain fly thing. If you stake this in the ground like this, right here, boom. This way, you have your window open, you have your back vent window open, but the water won't get in. So that way you'll get the breathability and the airflow without getting water in there. Um, you know, it'll keep you dry, but it'll let some air in. Um, now again, in the winter, I just leave that thing hanging down and I think that's the way that it stays the warmest. So if you want it warm, you just let that hang. There it is opened up. Show you a little inside view real quick. See? It is... There's one more feature that I don't want to forget to mention about this bivy sack, which makes it even better. Up here on the top of the canopy area, there's a large, really large zipper pocket so this will be inside, when you're inside of it, this will be right above your head. Um, and it's unlike the pocket on the sleeping bag that I said was too small. This pocket is great, it's nice and big, see-through mesh. Put my cell phone in here and have like a movie playing or something and I can lay like directly under it and watch it right above my head and I have to hold the phone. Uh, yeah, really good pocket, really nice, big. I like it a lot. Now one thing I will say it is very claustrophobic. If you have problems with claustrophobia, this is not going to be the thing for you. I'd recommend you get a tent, but um, if you don't mind, you know, tight spaces, then this thing is awesome. I think you'll love it. I also wanted to mention the dimensions of this thing for you guys. So, it's 92 or 91 inches long. I'm six foot tall, head to toe, plenty of room. Uh, 32 inches wide at the shoulder. Again, plenty of room for width for me. Um, and then 22 inches high here where the poles are, 17 inches high at the foot, which it does have a foot box. Um, nice foot box where, you know, it's squared off at the foot, so you don't have your toes have to be flat or anything. You can put your toes up, they'll be fine. There's a foot box down there like most sleeping bags have. But what I wanted to show you is how I sleep with this thing. So I'll have a mattress pad in here, a sleeping bag, a sleeping bag liner. Then my backpack, which will be empty of all its contents. It's not right now but most of the contents will be set up as sleeping system. But what I do, after I set all my sleeping system up, I'll take my backpack and I will slide it into here. I'll put my knees on my sleeping mat so it doesn't slide and I'll slide my backpack down into the bottom of the baby sack, like so. It's a little harder to do when it's it's full but when it's empty it slides down into the bottom there then I take this bag which is my camera bag that goes right here and then I go inside of it so even with a computer bag and my backpack inside of here, sorry about the sun, it's right in the shot. Ah, shit. DJ 
GI down. Still see that it zips up just fine. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> but it's not over yet. So I do have a couple other things I wanted to mention. Now, the zippers, although, you know, they zip great, they do have baffles, extra baffle material, which, you know, is used to, to go over the zipper so that cold air doesn't get through the zipper area. But what's confusing is that there's Velcro there. Well, I guess you could just be like I am now, reach out and uh, Velcro it all up. But going down the thing, there's Velcro, you know. So I guess you'd have to reach out and Velcro them all up. I was gonna say, how do you Velcro it once you're inside? I've never actually done it, but I guess you can just do it from like I just did. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you Velcro all those up, keeps the cold air out. But the problem is, unlike my sleeping bag, this zipper, which is a YKK zipper, so good, good one on that. It is a good zipper, it's a YKK. But unlike my sleeping bag, it doesn't have the zipper bunch up protector thing. I don't know what they call that, but um, it's basically like a, a casing that goes around the zipper that keeps the fabric of whatever you're zipping from bunching up into it. Since this doesn't have that, you get a lot of problems with the zipper bunching up. And when you're claustrophobic, you wake up in the morning, you're in a tight, dark spot, you want to get out and pee really fast. It's really frustrating and even kind of scary. I've got kind of like, you know, started freaking out a little bit because you you get the fabric stuck and you can't get it open. And you're like, how am I going to get out of here? And like, I've came close to, to just going Hulk mode and tearing out, <laughs> ripping out of it. But uh, I ended up getting it unstuck. But because of that problem, you'll see here, see this tear here? There's uh, multiple spots like that. And it happens the most around this head area, this canopy area, because this, this flap right here, the zipper's all the way back here. And with the mixture of this netting, which you see that hole there? See that hole in the net? That's from, that's from the zipper. This hole in the top in the green part here. Sorry, let me see if I can. The sun is like right in my eye, or right behind me. But that part right there, that's from the zipper, that tear. Um, that's the one time where I, I couldn't get out and I was like freaking out and I ended up just having to tear my way out. But uh, but yeah, because of that, you can also see that inside of there, there's actually another layer of fabric. So it's like three layers of fabric for insulation. This thing, this thing stays really warm. So yeah, but other than the few minor uh, durability issues that I've had, and like I say, I put my stuff through a lot. Um, I use it every night. Most people would only use this on the weekends for like a, a camping expedition maybe. Maybe they use it once or twice a month, two nights, three nights a month. I use this thing every single night. So a few minor things coming off or tearing, which I can sew up and fix easily, not a problem. One last feature I wanted to mention is that this bivy sack has something called factory taped seams, which I wanna see if I can show you one. So see the seams there, how they have tape? That's to keep cold air from getting in through basically like the weakest part of the bivy sack. Like the, the seams are the spot where the fabric is the thinnest. There's a lot of holes because of the, the sew, the thread going in and out, you know, there's all kinds of holes. And it's also a weaker spot. So by taping the seams like that, they're not only strengthening it, strengthening the bivy sack, but they're also keeping the cold air out and the hot air in even better. 
by protecting all the seams. One complaint is that the factory tape seam that goes along uh, the inside of here. All uh, right, where would it be? There. So that seam right there, um, as you can see, it's not taped. That's because within just a month of use, that whole piece of tape came, it slowly came undone a little, a little bit more and a little bit more each day until it got down all the way to the bottom. And then I just tore it off because it was just a piece of tape hanging there all the time. I tore it off. I think it's in my backpack and I'm going to um, actually hot glue or super glue it back onto there and see if that um, holds. But so yeah, the tape seam, you know, kind of a good thing. Kind of a bad thing if it's not done properly, like on that seam it wasn't. Um, but none of the other ones seem to be coming off, so, you know, take it how you want it. Well guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Um, that's all I got to say about the Chinook, Chinook Summit bivy sack. Um, my final thoughts on it are, if you like camping, if you're going on any you know wilderness excursions and it's going to be cold or it's going to be warm you don't want to carry a big a big you know six pound tent around with you you're going by yourself solo um especially for solo uh adventures bivy sack is the way to go chinook summit bivy sack is the way to go um you know you can get the military one it's going to be more durable but you're going to have to get a close foam foam mat and cut it in half and put it like a u-shape uh, over your face to keep the fabric off your face or you know build something to do that this one already has it good price 100 bucks you can't go wrong with that um, you won't find one like this for less than probably 150 200 bucks so this is the, the best price one i could find the small durability issues i've had like i said if you're careful with it and if you're not using it as much as i am you're not going to have those problems and um my last thought is if you're homeless or if you're somebody who likes to do things for the homeless, buy things for the homeless, uh, maybe you're with a charity organization that gives things to the homeless, a bivy sack, a sleeping bag, and a sleeping pad. If you're homeless, those are the three things you need. If you're giving stuff to homeless to help them survive and help them be happier, those are the three things that they need. Um, bivy sack, sleeping bag, sleeping pad if you need a sleeping bag and you don't know what kind you should use check out my video it's a review of the hike and bike aeolus zero degree sleeping bag it's a great sleeping bag great for the winter year-round mummy bag awesome check it out guys ever since i got this thing i don't want a tent i don't want nothing else i want my bivy sack for a homeless person you know, living out of a backpack who doesn't want to go into a shelter and be confronted with drugs and, you know, theft and being treated like a criminal when you're not. Um, or if you are, you know, it doesn't matter. You're at a shelter. You're not in a jail. They treat you like you're in a jail. If you don't want to go into that, you want to stay on the outside, get yourself a bivy sack, guys. Bivy sack is the way to go. I love it ever since I got it. I don't... I don't know how I was doing the homeless thing without it. So, All right, guys. As always, with City Hall behind me, I want to tell you guys, if you like this review, hit the thumbs up. Let me get some thumbs. Let me get some thumbs. If you, uh, if you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. And once you subscribe, if you want to know the second I put one of these videos out, so you can watch it right away, then hit the bell. So thumbs up, subscribe bell, drop me comments, take advantage of the fact that this is a small channel, guys. We just hit 200 subscribers yesterday. Hell yes. Um, thank you guys. Thank you so much. But it's still a small channel. So take advantage of that. Comment to me. Ask me questions in the comment. I answer every comment. Maybe not right away. It might take me a couple days to get to it. But um, I will answer your comments, guys. It helps me a lot, the positivity. Even the negativity helps me a lot because I know if I got haters, I'm doing something right. If, you, if you're going to take time out of your day to hate on a homeless guy making YouTube videos, then you're the loser and I'm the winner. <laughs> so uh, I'll catch up with you guys later. Check out my other videos.
and it's easy to put away, even when your hands are totally frozen. Hold out. Hold out, brings down. This guy, he's laid out flat. Now this sucks to do on the wind. I hate doing the wind. Then wrap it around, use the little loop, and tuck it tight, and then put it in your stuff bag. <laughs> 